front end is good. Now, out of high school, Nick Ribio had no D1 offers. Gonzaga offered him a walk-on position. You think he is using that as a little bit of momentum and fire? Do you think so? His brother Derek, the honorable mention All-American in his four years at Gonzaga, right now playing professionally in Germany. As Gray is very quickly the other way. 5-17 remaining in the first half. This is Gonzaga's best shooting lineup on the court. That's the reason that the Pilots cannot go zone. Harris again, strong to the rack. No good, rebounded by Sigma. Campbell wants to push. They said that a few times against Army, didn't they? Sigma with the rebound. Yeah, 19 times. Stoll tries the three, got it. 30 to 26, it's a four point game and the crowd gets back into it. Olenek thought about the answer inside to Goodson. Back out, Olenek no good, rebounded by Sigma. Coach said he just has a knack for knowing where that's going to be off the rim. Rivio to Campbell and he'll reset. Campbell, Rivio, got bold in the bite inside. Sigma on the reverse. Timeout, Mark Few, he wants to talk it over. The Pilots have gotten back into this one. 30 to 28. And it's been coming from all over. They've shot a three from beyond the arc. They've worked it inside the Sigma. And Jared Stoll, we mentioned it, his three-point range on the outside. Last year, third in the nation in that. This year, close to the top 25. And you cannot leave him open. No, tell Idaho that he made 10 three-pointers, 30 points in that game. He has unlimited range. And the release is just beautiful. Now, the thing to watch, the more threes that he makes, the more space that creates for his teammates. Remember, last possession, Sigma is wide open for the layup. Why? Because Stoll is pulling out the defense away from the basket. He's a better three-point shooter than he is two-point shooter. If you look at his numbers, he's 45% from beyond the arc. But overall, when you combine all his field goals, he's only a 42% shooter. Huh. Let's see if Mark Few has something in his bag of tricks. Out of timeouts, he's excellent at targeting hot so scores. Goodson on the jump stop all the way to the bucket. He has four. And it's back up to a four-point lead as we tick under four minutes to go in half number one. Campbell guarded closely by Goodson. Has a couple guys trying to set picks up top. Crossover by Harris. No look pass inside for Sigma and drops it in. What a look by TJ Campbell. Described as the X factor for this team in this game. As the pilots go, he will go. And another block called on Luke Sigma, and he did not like it. Timeout on the floor with 3.28. Tim, another great pass by TJ Camp. Back here in Portland, the Pilots trailing Gonzaga 32 to 30 with 3.28 left in the first half. Jared Stoll has gotten the Pilots back in this game with his sharp shooting from beyond the arc. And Matt Bolden, we talked a lot about his scoring and how well he can do with that from all three different positions he plays, whether it's the point shooting guard or small forward. But he also has six assists in this game as well. Women's college basketball continues on ESPNU Sunday with two games. Action begins in the Big East at 1 Eastern as C. Vivian Shriggers, Rutgers, Scarlet Knights take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Then at 6 Eastern, it's an SEC showdown between the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs women's college basketball on ESPNU Sunday. More information, log on to ESPNU.com. Out of the break, Elias Harris is at the line and gets the front end of the one and one. 12 points in the first half for the 6'8 freshman out of Spire, Germany. Yeah. 
Mark Few has to feel good about being in the lead here. Sacri, Gray, and Bolden have not scored a basket yet. Bolden's only points coming from the free throw line in this game. As he guards Nick Rivio. Rivio with the left all the way to the 10. Can't get it to fall. Goodson on the fast break the other way, guarded closely by Ito. Finds an open Bolden and he knocks down the three right on cue. You know, with two early fouls, you would think that the pilots could try to go with Stephen Gray. The problem is he's covering Jared Stoll. He's a three-point shooter that doesn't drive. It's a great tactical move by Mark Few. Rivio is trying to get by Bolden on the dribble and having trouble. Ball's on the floor. Olenek comes up with it, gets it to Bolden, and he's pushing it. Down dishes. Tries to get to the Goodson on the no look. Pulls it back in. Bolden's wide open. Another three. Yes. Did he hold his follow through to half court? I think he did. <laughs> Left the goose head up in the air, and it's back up to a 10 point lead for the Zags. Ito loses the dribble, gets the Knutes in top of the key. Ito. Struggle the last two years as a starter shooting. That's why he's coming off the bench in this his senior season. Stoll trying to work off Goodson goes baseline. Can't get the foul. Goodson will push it back the other way. It's another three this time from Gray. Too strong. Ito comes up with the board. And go to work again. Stole guarded by Gray now. He has the job of trying to make sure he doesn't pull that trigger. Rivio behind the back. He really has been trying to work on Bolden on the offensive end. And these half court sets, Tim, is where Coach Reveno has really told us this Portland team is struggling. Inside Smelters, well, not that time. One fifteen remaining, 40 to 32. Stephen Gray will run the point now as he gets the play call from Mark Few at the bench. Holding off the dribble between the legs and knocks it down. Did we mention he can score? You know, that's NBA right there. The ability to break down, you, you see all the quirky head and shoulder swivels. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, he is an NBA player next year. A big mismatch inside. They've got to go to Knutson. He's got Goodson inside. It's a huge mismatch. Bolden has 12, the second Zags player already in double figures, along with Harris's 13. Five to shoot. Rivio has to force it. The follow though by Canusa. There's that fast tempo we talked about. Gray pumps three, goes baseline, back out top. Olinick cross court almost over the head of Bolden, but he saves it. Another cross court inside the low post to Harris. And he stepped on the baseline. No bucket will go the other way. Defensive substitution. They're going to bring size and athleticism into the game. Gray with two fouls is going out. Coming up at halftime, go inside the studios with Doug Bell and Drew Barry. Big East nail biters, top 10 upsets, and take a look at the top 25 scoreboard from today. Campbell pushes all the way down and draws the foul. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Number three, you look at T.J. Campbell, and you've got to be impressed with the numbers. And his size to be a force is really impressive. He's built like a football player. Well, actually, growing up in Arizona, a three-time All-State player at wide receiver, cornerback, and a kick returner. Very much under recruit because everybody just assumed he was going to play college football. That is 73 hundredths of a second remaining. That is not 73 seconds. As Campbell knocks down the free throw, so 
Yeah, nothing they can do. Less than a second, he'll chuck it up the prayer for Goodson. And short, and that takes us to the half. 18th ranked Gonzaga leading 42 to 36. Let's go to Doug Bell and Drew Barry with Sports Center U.